there was some strange lesbian that developed a crush on me on Facebook. Okay, that uh, our, she was a fitness personality or fitness what do you call this like a content creator do you understand what i'm saying and i followed her for those reasons and um she ended up and i commented on one of her like posts as a basically fan i was a fan of hers okay she was huge bigger than me okay maybe huge is a big word she was chilling on something like five thousand followers and given that i had like literally like 100 followers she was basically a celebrity right so she was huge or bigger than me and i commented on one of her videos basically giving her advice about music because she was always talking about how um and commenting about how it is that i i'm using the music that i'm using not for monetary purposes um or copyright whatever so please don't copyright me whatever so i gave her advice that she can use music in a video that is copyright free um type establishment thing and she responded surprisingly because she had so many comments that i did not expect her to respond to me and then she asked me where and so when she asked me where i then gave her links like a lot of links to give her music that is copyright free etc uh from me giving her those links she then decided to follow me i noticed because as when people follow you on facebook you get a notification yeah she started to follow me i was like oh my goodness the big five thousand follower chick that does fitness saw my page that i was coming from also i, I ran a fitness page and so she followed me and i felt sort of kind of honored really by that on some oh wow you know thanks for following me and so now we are like friends i guess on on facebook right i follow your page you follow mine etc and everything that i would post you would like it like it etc and i was like hey i found a friend like another fitness influencer and she was in in zimbabwe she was in zimbabwe next thing bah i have a spiritual gift in you guys whether or not you want to believe it i wake up from this like horrific like just absolutely prolifically nightmarish nightmare where it is that this chick i'm sleeping with her as in sexual activity in my dream that is very exorbitant and i am making out with my solid christian convictions in a bed where it is that i am literally having lesbian uh, relations with this fitness influencer that i befriended on facebook type establishment thing and in this dream I, I she was trying to convince me that it's okay she kept on telling me look i'm christian too god is okay with this i'm christian too god is okay with this and she when i looked at my my hand my this this uh, marriage hand this my wedding finger my wedding hand i had a ring on my finger and i was married to her in my dream she was my wife for crying out loud and i was in bed with her very severely convicted of the wrongness of this lesbian affair and this woman was seducing me severely and i was in some dingy dark room that looked like my grandmother's house um a room we echo the back of my grandmother's house and usually when i see things that are in that backward mode and also lots of sexual activity and when i woke up i was so angry oh guys like i can't even describe it to you i was mad i was a blowing steam out of my my any orifice in my body instead of puma like um logo me puma steam no hozwa just boiling sweat i was so angry i was like the that she doesn't know me from a bar of soap she does not know me and yet she has seduced me and after that seduction my content froze on facebook basically with me going nowhere and what that was supposed to do which is why Gorobella, i can't stand it like no man's business a lot of these men that slap women with Gorobella, what they do is essentially go to a sangoma say give you the photo and everything right give us some the photo and everything and then they hope that you will flirt with them then they hope that you will be the one that will seduce them like that you will essentially hover in their grill and suggest or hint to them that we have a fun and then that's when they go in for the kill that's why i can't stand it guys because it takes away a person's autonomy never mind that it's so arrogant some of it is so pompous because these people literally back telling a meet and then they sit back waiting for you to come groveling at their feet you know just like try to lick them that's how pompous sorcery is i don't know how many spells of this nature i have seen from men that would like proper i don't have enough relations with them i don't talk with them enough in a day i don't have anything of substance that is significant that i do with them so regularly that i would see them so frequently in my dreams and yet i would literally be groveling at their feet that's how corabella works they want you to seduce them they want you 
Bahu lawyer to no no you look low you in so that you can hover around their desk if they're a colleague so that you can work out a whole bunch in the area that they work out at, at the gym if they are somebody that you keep on seeing at the gym until such time that you will flirt with them so openly that they will then go in for the kill because they bring you to themselves and this chick froze my youtube comment my facebook fitness content to make me hover around her give me more advice on how to grow my page and start flirting with her until she's like so um you know how would you feel about having lunch except she was all the way in zimbabwe and the lord was like my point exactly Urla zimbabwe this chick she wants to move to south africa she wants to move to south africa because the laws here are lax the laws here have got diarrhea the loose they're incontinent the laws in your country permit abortion they permit gay marriage they permit all things that are illegal in zimbabwe she is living in what she calls a religious nutcase for a country and she feels stymied and she feels suffocated by the zimbabwean laws that say indaba zoguyo legalize gay marriage so she wants to move to south africa and when she found when she met a woman on the internet that she was attracted to she imagined she could convert her to a freaking lesbian so that she could marry her and move to her country i told you that story yeah lesbian eleyako zimbabwe do you understand what i'm saying so that you can understand what under heaven it is that south africa is to much of africa it is an asylum like haven it is an asylum haven to many african countries whose laws are still pretty rigid who still are pretty unmoving concerning lgbtqia plus 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 etc when they come to south africa they have leg room like they can be drag queens they can be whatever they want to do nobody gives them grief they, there is a an elder it's a pro a colorful agenda alphabet community nation it's liberal the way that america is liberal you won't find a difference you won't see any like dent in south in, in a person's lifestyle that has lived in america that's not living in south africa the only thing that they might feel is the fact that there's always electricity cuts but prior to there being power cuts in the country like uh years ago when i was still starting out in corporate south africa south africa didn't have this power cut crisis and my my sister brought some dude from the us that she was with and he was able to be so free and like just luxuriously swinging in a hammock in this country he he felt no he had no qualms with being moved from a first world country to lift in south africa because it was nothing on top of that he was living in santon so it was luxurious for him they like gumna and south africa like i cannot say so like south africa has been destroyed by the black government i can't say that enough it used to be heaven to live here you would never ever be able to spot the difference between south africa and some of the most industrialized first world countries in the world the like you wouldn't especially if you are among the middle class in this country you would never feel that you are in what they call a mer apparently an emerging market or a third world country yeah south africa has made itself hella freaking third world it has made itself more emerging than it was in 1998 because of the fact that it has uh, worn so much corruption in the government it has worn so much corruption in the government therefore um it's no longer the, the joyful spunky lovely little girl that it used to like be to hang out with on the school playground every single day say mar despite how much it's lost its first spunk it nonetheless is still an asylum seekers haven that's why south africa has got the same border crisis um at, at, at uh, pretty much it's the lowest uh, it's the southernmost country in all of africa and it's got a border crisis on all of its sides uh, not all of its sides i guess most of it is as oceanic but it, it, there's an issue with people flooding into africa we've got an uh, a migrant issue in south africa just as for instance in america in texas there's a migrant issue at the border yeah at their borders they they are just struggling to keep migrants out south africa is exactly like that in africa it's the america of africa i can't say that enough i'm, I'm trying to help you understand so there's a lot of xenophobia in the country just as there's a lot of xenophobia in america there's a lot of xenophobia because there are a lot of people that are illegal that are chilling in our country that are indeed wreaking quite a lot of havoc not all of them are honest laborers do you understand what i'm saying and so for those reasons they're destroying the country's economy and they are they're destroying the country's economy they're also violent they're undocumented there's all different kinds of weird stuff going on there so as a result of this there is a low-key sentiment in the country of xenophobia against zimbabweans against uh somalis ethiopians people coming from uh, northern parts of africa um pretty much everywhere else so even like the rest of South saharan africa they flee their countries because there is respite in south africa not only in terms of resources and ability to economically thrive right but also just in terms of 
of all different kinds of manner of nasty sins that people want to commit like if you want to go and freely have as many abortions as you want South Africa is a country for you if you want to go and marry as many men as you want South Africa is a country for you if you want to go and, and, and marry um uh, a man as a man and a woman as a woman and basically just disregard what God has to say South Africa is the country for you everything goes in this country it is woke in the worst way and I don't even understand how, how South Africa can be woke when it, it, it stands with countries that are so anti-woke like the fact that it is an ally of China ally of Russia ally of Iran ally of basically all of these Middle Eastern countries Egypt it is an ally of all of these countries that it has come together with in, in, in the BRICS alliance and yet be so liberal is I don't know how like South Africa can kiss like be bosom buddies with countries that are so draconian in their laws and be so liberal like America and imagine that it's gonna stand in bricks I just I don't get it I don't understand that's why in Jafela it's busy f like literally messing and plucking out the feathers of South Africans that are saying to South Africa and the leadership you are tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine take a stand because right now you stand for nothing and so you will fall for everything who are you exactly are you a muslim south africa or are you a christian who are you exactly are you a conservative or are you a liberal who are you south africa exactly are you pro israel or are you pro hamas who are you because you have literally been on shaky waters for three decades ever since anc came into power they don't know what to stand with because they, they belong to everything uh, some of the laws that they have legalized in this country would not stand in the middle east and yet they have made allies with middle eastern partners and i don't know what in the world they want so i mean when you're that tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine the bible says that if you ask for something in prayer and you don't believe that you're gonna get it you are unstable you must not anticipate that you're going to receive anything from the lord because on that day you're unstable in all of your ways and cannot be trusted you're not solid South Africa is this thing that is tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine. How else can I describe, describe this country? The way you feel I'm so misplaced. Uh, 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 uh. Hence why it has become a migrant nightmare for like us. We, we like People are flooding in here because they can do what they will. They can do what thy wilt for this is the whole of the law. You tell me if there's a border crisis in Iran. You tell me if there's a border crisis in Lebanon. You tell me if there is a basically just these people struggling to like keep people out of their country. Nah, heck no. If anything, the border crisis is, that is in the difficulty for them to leave. In the difficulty for them to leave. But South Africa, we've got a border crisis. The borders are bursting at the seams, almost opened for everybody to come in. Because that are lesbian. They want to go and marry whoever they want to be. There is a movie um, called, I think it's The Mummy Returns or whatever. Uh, there is this guy there that uh, upon dealing with Emo Tab, you know the one where there's like Emo Tab, Emo Tab, Emo Tab. There is this like fluffy little, like rando, Okima, Bobby, feeble looking silly guy with a strange little uncracked Adam's apple voice. Mm, that uh, when he is faced by Emo Tab, you know how Emo Tab is this guy that sucks out the lifeblood out of people in order to build himself a new body so he can go and get Hanaxina moon or whatever Imhotep Imhotep yeah Alja is threatening this dude coming to him on some her I'm gonna destroy you all right and then this guy takes out a Christian cross and prays in the name of Jesus and then that doesn't work Imhotep is still all up in his scroll and then he takes out the, the crescent moon of Islam and prays in in, in the um, uh, is it uh, is it uh, Arabic or whatever and Imhotep is still out here like pursuing him and then answer something at Buddha nothing works takes out something from some other religion nothing works until ultimately he takes out the Jewish star of David and speaks in Hebrew and then Imhotep is like huh you speak the language of the slaves I could have a purpose for you yeah so Africa is like that guy in the mummy like tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine when it calls for it uzo keep by a christian cross and spay and pray in the name of jesus even their national anthem is jesus see left and right uzo keep a matambo masangoma and see if at all that's going to work for them makshuba extra uzo keep the crescent moon of islam and stand with hamas makshuba extra uzo keep the buddhist like a statue and if that doesn't work uzo keep the crescent moon uh not crescent moon i already spoke about that uzo keep the what you might call this thing the star of david or hebrew or aramaic or whatever and that's and then and then see if at all what's gonna give what's gonna give and ultimately when you are that fluffy and you are that tossed to and from by, the, by every wind of doctrine just like Imhotep, who is a prototype or a typology of a devil in the mummy returns the devil will say i have use for you i have purpose for you ultimately that guy passes away by being logged in some treasure trove that he's trying trying to steal treasure out of and when he's told come let's escape because this whole place is shutting down he's still trying to grab treasure and does not escape on time and then he gets eaten by some tiny little animals so africa is presently useful but for all of five seconds i told you the law showed me this country is going to cease to be a nation 
it's it's presently useful in its fluffy toss to and from status by every wind of doctrine because Imhotep has found South Africa useful. Imhotep has found South Africa useful to stand for Hamas. Imhotep has found South Africa useful to hate the Jews, to intensify anti-Semitism. Imhotep has found this apparent Christian country useful in order to basically persecute South African Christians in a way that they don't understand. Yeah. Right now, South Africa is very helpful to Africa at large, which the devil is working tooth and nail to water down with woke ideology the way that the West is trying to pressurize us, even like trying to like literally threaten us with sanctions. If we don't walk away from the from our stand as Africa against the colorful community and all of its ludicrous um, proclamations on the rooftop and demands from us. And South Africa is this country that Africans can flood to if at all they want to just be as gay as they want to be. If they want to be as lesbian as they want to be, they can come to South Africa. It is the one country, one of the, the, the most liberal countries in all of Africa. And so Imhotep, even though he would have been happy to destroy South Africa, to him it's like, whoa, I've got use for this country. I can cause um, Zim Zimbabwean lesbians to flirt with South African lesbians and move South Africa to have freedom in their lesbianism and so increase the colorful agenda population of South Africa. They can all just come from Ethiopia. They can come from uh, Ghana. They can come from, what do they call this? What's the, uh, the most recent country that was out just standing? Kenya. I guess this colorful agenda to a point of dissing uh, Kamala Harris. Hey, come, go to, if you're Kenyan and they are just threatening you with, with um, what you call this thing. Uh, if you proliferate this agenda to children, you can even be executed. I know, go to South Africa. So we've got a border crisis, like a border crisis, like no man's business. Everybody is coming in and uh, bursting at the seams are uh, our borders. And when then you are bringing more evil people into the country than those that we actually need. If you're not bringing Christians into our land, if, if, if for instance, like Somali Christians who feel persecuted in the land or, or uh, Nigerian Christians, especially in the like uh, regions of Nigeria that are extremely persecuting, like the Boko Haram sections or whatever, the Muslim sections, if, if they if they're not the ones that are coming, they're not the ones that are seeking asylum in South Africa. It is not God fearing law abiding citizens that are seeking asylum in a democratic land like South Africa. It's the wicked of Africa. It's all the people that are trying to proliferate as much sin as they can possibly proliferate coming into South Africa. And so if you bring more like abortionists and more gay men and women into South Africa, you magnify all those that are going to stand against Bible, biblical Christianity in the country. And so you cause the persecution, never mind of asylum seekers into South Africa trying to live here because it's impossible for them to be Christian in the country that they live in, in Africa, because it's largely Muslim. You are causing, you are not only reducing the number of those kinds of asylum seekers in the nation that we need, because who does not want an extra saint in the land that we might pray for the country? You are also causing the persecution, persecution, do you understand, of South African Christians by even foreigners. Like there was a Nigerian man in like about a couple of years ago when I was still living in Cosmo City that nearly raped me. He was a Muslim and he was trying to basically convert me to Islam first and foremost. And secondly, he felt entitled to me and the random bugger did not even have papers. He was illegally in the country and that's how I got him off my back. I got him off my body by telling him I'm gonna scream first of all and this whole complex is going to respond because we are living, it's a black neighborhood. And so black people don't ignore danger in the community. When another black person screams, they only ignore black people when they're in the burbs. When they get gentrified, that's when they hear a woman screaming and they do nothing and call the police. But ekasi, ekasi, black people, when they hear a woman screaming, they don't care. They go there and they burn some houses down. They punch some people. They vigilantically take matters into their own hands because nobody's trying to respond appropriately to black pain. So black people are very vigilantic in the gassies. And at the time I was living in a gassi and I told him, this is not remsakh. Where is it that I can scream and no one's gonna come for me? This is Cosmo City. Meaning that if I scream, my name is Azoza. So get off me, get off me. And on top of that, you are a Nigerian without any, uh, what is this, papers. I told him that he's a Nigerian without papers. And given that I will have screamed and neighbors will have come and basically broken the door down to get you off me. They, what, what is this? They're gonna call the police on you. And when then you're in police custody, you gonna get extradited back to Nigeria. You're gonna go back, you're gonna get deported. That's what's good. And that was enough to get him off me. That was enough to get that guy that tried to rape me off me. Literally, I have endured stuff like that. The same man of which was brought into the environment where I was living in by my drunkard dad. 
that my mother threw me into the same environment living with and so I was basically put in harm's way and initially I was friends with this guy and he thought that he could just slip him his grubby fingers into my ecosystem and I freaked out and I told him the basically where to get off and if I was not smart like quickly just like, like thinking on my feet type thing I don't know what in the world comes kind of story we'd be telling today I don't know what kind of story we'd be telling today that random like vagrant nigerian guy that is chilling in the borders of south africa that is undocumented is the kind of person that is flooding to our country because of how evil it is back when we were still friends i asked him why did you choose to, to come to south africa and he spoke about how it is, a, is it, it is that the roads here are better infrastructure is better and at that time already we were struggling with power cuts so he was basically talking about how it is that he preferred it because of infrastructure largely so like i said so, uh, south africa is uh, africa's most industrialized economy and so it is very easy to live in south africa it's very easy to live in top of that it's very very liberal and so therefore people who want to live all different kinds of nasty wild sinful lifestyles think this is heaven just as people who want to live all different kinds of wild nasty sinful lifestyles think america is a heaven they just want to go and break down the borders and they don't care who says what they want to spread themselves thin like a grown green laurel tree and decimate everybody's um human rights that's what's good while trying to pursue their own they want to decimate everybody else's human rights in the pursuit of their own human rights as if though these human rights are like animal farm all human rights are equal except some human rights are more equal than others so your rights are more applicable than mine etc blah blah what a, what a fish uh, paste and so this nigerian dude had um i guess like a whole you know how they hang out with each other a whole bunch of nigerian um friends but then his uh, the, one of his boys that lived in the complex where i was living had a south african wife and that's just my thing Ish. the the guy that he was coming there to visit his wife was a south african and that's how he was able to stay in the country for so long and that nigerian guy had a baby mama that was south african and he had intentions of marrying her and yet he was busy trying to fraternize with me type establishment thing precisely because now about south african citizenship when you live in a country that everybody wants to move to because they can be as free as a bird as they want to be there is always a danger of that country being info being infiltrated by by just gangrene by garbage by rubbish and so if at all south africa is no longer safe haven for christians but it is becoming increasingly insufferable for christians as a democratic nation as a democracy as a democracy uh where are we gonna go because if we get squeezed out as with osmosis if we get squeezed out of a democratic nation, where are we gonna go? People are flying to our country to have more legroom. Where are we gonna go? Because they're flying from countries, mind you, that are persecuting of Christians. They are flying from countries that don't care about human rights. That's why women wanna, you know, spread their, their, their bodies thin at the beach wearing bikinis. Due to the fact that where they come from, they gotta wear a hijab that's covering even their eyes. And all they see through is a net. And so they go to Cape Town Beach and they rock a bikini and don't nobody care. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody give them uh, side eyes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Where when our country is the country that enables women, Muslim women to wear bikinis at the beach, where am I gonna go? Where it is that I'm going to be expected to wear a hijab, even though I'm not even even though I'm not a Muslim? Where am I gonna go? If my democracy, if my free nation is squeezing me out, making me seek asylum, get that guy. And that's happening across the world to Christian countries that are generally comfortable and safe that everybody runs to when they're in trouble in their lands. And those countries are getting populated by Muslim populations that are very draconian in their uh, ideologies and what they want to ultimately achieve in that space. They are getting like uh, overwhelmed and run over by people of the colorful community that wants to co transform their nations into their image. They want to transform those countries into their image. So if we get a whole bunch of like lesbians coming to South Africa, literally, after a couple of years, this whole country is going to be converted into their image such that my human rights as a South African will cease to matter because of the strength of pushback by the colorful community in my country. By the colorful community in my country that has been pumped up, magnified by all of these migrants from outside of the country that are members of the colorful community. So they give themselves voting numbers. They give themselves stats, do you understand? They, they make, they, they all come from all of these Muslim countries where it is, like I said, that the women cannot wear bikinis at the beach. But they come to Durban Beach and they wear bikinis. But they are also pro Hamas. So you convert the whole country into this like Islamist, like pro, like what, what is this, pro terrorist state. You, you then magnify the numbers of people holding placards in the, like in, in, in the country, rioting insisting that our president pressurizing our president Cyril Ramaphosa or whoever might be the president of the time to take a stand against Israel 
because all these Muslims that came from the Middle East and couldn't wear bikinis, but now they're wearing bikinis in Durban Beach. However, still nonetheless hold to their ideologies within this Islamic mindset. And now they are squeezing Garabo out even though she's born and bred in South Africa. But no, they have been made South African by marrying South Africans. And they've been brought into the country, just like that random lesbian from Zimbabwe wanted me. So that she could add to the population of lesbians in the country. And so to the number of pro-LGBT etc. voters in the country. And so therefore squeeze out people with a very dogmatic view of the world because they are religious. Like me. People who are pro, no, no sorry, not pro whatever, but what I want to say was uh, biblical Christians. People who are Bible believing Christians are going to be increasingly persecuted in democratic countries. And like I said, human rights are going to make like animal farm. Animals, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. In other words, all human rights are the same, they're equal, but some human rights are more equal than others. And the human rights of liberal rioters are going to excel above those or at least be regarded with grander favor above those of conservative people. And I, thanks to my conversion to Christ in a Christian country, so it ought to have been largely conservative. My conversion has made me a conservative in this nation. And I am living in a country that is increasing the number of liberal randos walking around. And with that being a thing, I am being increasingly persecuted, wanting to leave the country. And yet, where am I gonna go? Get that guy. Where am I gonna go? There's nowhere else to go in South Africa. We're all, not in South Africa, in Africa, we're all being infiltrated. So when that, that, that is the status quo, it, that becomes clear then according to God's word in Matthew 24, that look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. Look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh because you're seeing all of these things increasing. When you start to see your nation looking more like Sodom and Gomorrah, look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. Sodom and Gomorrah, what's characteristic of it? The colorful agenda. When your nation is starting to look like the days of Noah, look up and lift up your head for your redemption door draweth night. What, what in the world under heaven was the key issue? In the days of Noah, men were filled with violence on the earth. And on top of that, their thoughts and intentions were evil continually. So, I mean, really, when that's going on and when your country's getting pumped into by other people coming from all different kinds of places on the cardinal map that are haters of God and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, despisers of those who do good, those who call good evil and evil good. When your nation is getting fueled at the brim, even like spilling over by people of that nature to a point where nobody sees an issue with a person that is vying for presidency in any given electoral year, talking about how it is that white people must all be killed in 2023. Ain't nobody out just seeing a problem with him holding office. Ain't nobody out here highlighting him for what it is that he is. When, when, when people can be so made extreme by radicalizing a, a, a large freaking population of a country. When you, rag, when you radicalize black people against white people, because that's exactly what Julius Malema is doing. When you radicalize black people against white people, you are literally creating a reverse apartheid. And that guy, just the other day, was not arrested for hate crimes. He was not called into some kind of equality court for saying that, that Sonia killed the boo, I killed the farmer, it must be sung again and again and again. I mean, goodness, imagine if a white man rocked up that was in that official capacity and said that in his national party. There would be a tribunal held day before yesterday. Why is your president not being indicted for what under heaven it is? that he did with that Maniko Palapal. That's your country. When, when countrymen are turning a blind eye to such like flagrant indiscretions on the part of leadership, those of us will be grieved who are righteous in the land and we will want to leave. But when we can't go, when every time we walk, we keep stubbing our toes against like corners of beds. There is therefore on that day no earth for us to occupy. When we cannot be fruitful and multiply on the earth and occupy it, what, what's, what are we gonna do? Look at guy. Where are we gonna go, guys? I mean, really, like, if you cannot move laterally, if you cannot move horizontally, if you cannot occupy some other patch of the planet, I guess all you can do is look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. You have made it impossible for us to look anywhere but up. We cannot look to the periphery. The horizon is dim. It leaves a lot to be desired. There's nothing but barren wastelands over there. There is no health in many societies in the world, including Christian ones. And those that we are holding on for dear life as our hope are becoming increasingly wicked. Like I said, America currently stands for Israel, largely as a country. They have not abandoned Israel. But if you turn on the television and look at what's happening in America, uh, uniquely individually on the ground, even in conservative states, you will gag. So even where it is that it appears there's still some kind of semblance of a normal life, it's, it's, it's so abnormal in that normality that all that can happen is the rapture, is the rapture. You have created an insufferable ecosystem. You've gassed the earth. 
and made us choke on something that we know that ultimately after breathing this nasty air for 10 years our lungs are gonna bleed our lungs are gonna bleed this is not sustainable for never mind christians but anybody at all that's just sober normal rational that thinks the way that they ought there is no way for us to put our feet down pastors are being pressurized to preach rubbish at their pulpits or at least keep it light pastors are being pressurized to keep it light and it is precisely because of that desire to keep it light that nobody has a fear of god there's no reverence in their hearts these hellfire and brimstone preachers are so unpopular that in order to make bread in jefela make their daily bread they gotta water down their sermons just to feed their families and now when you pressurize a man by the difficulty to feed his his kids by the difficulty to take his kids to school when you pressurize a man to change his sermons because he is nervous that he's not going to be able to pay the mortgage where his house and when he's where his wife and children stay on that day you are putting him in a rough position you are putting him in a tight patch you are putting him in a position to essentially water down the message that rescues your soul you think water it down we gotta water ourselves down that you might be more comfortable in our midst that you might not feel like you're sitting on a bed of bricks or oh, sorry on a, on a prickly chair when you're in church because we're not busy shuffling around uncomfortably as a person with a gay lifestyle sitting in a church where they're preaching against homosexuality walk out if you don't want to be there but don't make like some as he did a couple of years ago grace bible church and told the whole of south africa that grace is is, is, is basically pro-hate and caused my toilet to go on sabc news and basically pretend that that did not happen or if not pretend that didn't happen this is what he actually did let, let me just put this out there my toilet went and said that the pastor that came in and preached against the colorful community or at least that lifestyle in church was not from the church he was not a residing pastor at grace and so basically in so stating that he was retracting what that man was saying as biblical veracity he was saying that grace does not believe in what that man said and that they don't control what it is that he preaches about so then i mean if grace bible church is inadvertently through its pastors saying that this man that preached against homosexuality was not speaking on behalf of grace bible church he is inadvertently also saying that we are pro colorful community just to titivate the taste buds of one celebrity in the country a celebrity also Mizi. They were trying to titivate the taste buds of Somizi. Somizi of which recently counseled his daughter in some reality TV show to embrace Amadrozi Ak, her ancestors, even though her daughter was like, it's not for me. I don't like the whole ancestors ancestral worship thing. And Somizi was busy telling his daughter, Palisa's daughter, that one of these days so badly that you will ultimately capitulate. So Mizi was telling his daughter that like me, I try to do Jesus only and it didn't work out. So now I have embraced my ancestors. So this guy is exactly like that character in the mummy. So Mizi, that is, yeah. Who will bring out a Christian cross. What is this? She's in bep. That's what I'm going to do. Ngoba, this holding on to Jesu and Jengpela, I say, Benzi, that's the thing. What is the profit of man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Telling himself, I tried religion, it didn't work. I tried religion, it did not work. And so I'm going to go out there, Mina, with all of this, these mixes. And that same guy that got Grace Bible Church in trouble. And now when you get into trouble, according to God's word in Mark 10, in Matthew, um, is it Mark 10? Yes, it's Mark 10. Mark 10, yeah mark 10 and also maybe matthew 24 now mark 10 it is written that they're gonna throw and also in john 16 they're gonna throw you out the synagogues they're gonna persecute you they're gonna hand you over to stuff and on that day don't be uh, scared as to what you're gonna say when you get in front of these governors and kings because you're gonna testify to my name so they're gonna persecute you and then when you are in front or when you're on national television when you're on national television now my toilet that's when you must make like john MacArthur like the way that he always gets called to comment on cnn and on fox news and he never wavers he never wavers you must be like Vody buckham they never waver on their stand for what is right and what is wrong when you're being called out for being a dogmatic buffoon that can't stand the colorful agenda you do them no favor when you now abandon your statement that you stood by at first because now you're on national television now you're on sabc news you have been placed before governors and kings and this is what god has to say about you my toilet if you deny me before men i will deny you before the father but no what he said was that that pastor from outside of south africa was not speaking for grace so what did he do it's written in God's word that it'll be a better for a millstone to be tied around your neck and for you to be thrown in the ocean 
if you cause any of the people or any of these little ones of mine to sin then for you to face me in the judgment and so while so measy has caused offenses in the country it is also written in god's word that offenses will come but woe to the man through whom these offenses come while so measy has caused an offense and like a little child gone out kicking and screaming because he wants to stay gay and happy in a church matole the blood of dice omizi is on his hands because omizi being a parishioner and not a pastor is the tenement of a child and woe to matole for bringing on those offenses woe to matole for essentially grabbing somizi and saying it's okay your lifestyle is cool just come back to grace and don't say anything bad and don't cause the derailing of our church somizi was supposed to be told in the kineso and so manja because he did not warn usomizi on a rooftop the blood of somizi is on his hands is that basic he got away with murder and so much murder did he get away with so much was he uh, basically carried on in his insanity usomizi years down the line he then went on right here to tell his daughter uguti you gotta embrace i'm my ancestor so great do you stand by that too grace now umza lanwen umza lanwen usomizi is also telling in dr gazi ake uguti ayo chusa i'm my ancestors so i mean really at this point who are we running with so Mizi, is he our pastor? Is he who it is that he's going to that is going to influence our doctrine? A whole celebrity that's living a very flagrant lifestyle in front of everybody that is unhappy that, that is that is sinful against God. He is not pleasing to the Lord right now. He wants to have his bread buttered on both sides. Get to enter heaven despite living a lifestyle that he knows is gonna condemn him. He knows it, he knows it. And you just went on right ahead and buttered him up, made him feel all nice and better. He's damned, yes. But more so are you damned, Matole, for doing that to him. You put him in a position to continue to fluff his peacock feathers in an ecosystem where it is that he is uh, he has just solidified his condemnation. You put him on an even broader road that was already broad on the way to hell. But that's your country right there. So I mean when when that whole thing happened with Matole, I I was still in the church system. I was still rolling and roaming around in these streets. And then now look at my life. Well, of course, my life looks like this when it is that the body of Christ capitulates to celebrities in the entertainment industry that want to live their wicked lives. When, when, when our pastors are doing that, of course, then those who are truly of the Lord are going to be squeezed out of the synagogue. The day is coming when those who persecute you will do so thinking they're doing a service to God. You are going to get persecuted by the lukewarm conglomerate who are going to throw you out scatter you shepherd you literally shepherds that are whitewashed tombs scattering the sheep you are going to cause out of south africans on the ground armas gifts a do you understand they are running these streets by themselves and since divide and conquer is a thing the occult is then going to be pouncing on these unfortunate believers like no man's business because of the fact that due to the fact that do you understand what i'm saying their shepherds were too scared to stand before governors and kings and testify to the name of Jesus Christ. Like people don't regard their actions as a, a, a gingy, deplorable, reprehensible. They, they don't see it that way. I mean, it doesn't matter that Matola had, had an attack of conscience, perhaps, pot potentially. After that interview, bottom line is the whole of South Africa heard him retract his statement. The whole of South Africa heard him say, no, that was not us. The whole of South Africa heard Matole, who, by the way, had one up on Mosa Son in terms of his doctrinal veracity. And yet, a man who had one up on Mosa Son in terms of doctrinal veracity, even though Mosa's the one that runs that whole show, was not able to comfort parishioners, congregants in his church that were standing by the truth that they will stand by doctrine. When that man was busy preaching, go grace, when Somizi walked out, when he mentioned how it is that there is no place for homosexuals in the kingdom of heaven, the whole church was like amen. Essentially, brethren were uh, in agreement. And yet, Somizi managed to cause everybody there to be poured on Meizi. Banalios Babatuka. Fire coming off them. He poured water on that as their pastor. And he was not sat down and excommunicated or disbanded from his work a job as a pastor because he did not represent the the the, 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 the not the country sorry but the church as the lord would have him represented he is cowardly and there is no place in the kingdom of heaven for cowards he was supposed to be made to, 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 to step down step down if at all church discipline was employed but it wasn't he maintained his status as one of the lead pastors of grace bible church and that is south africa, that is south africa for you and so when we can easily be guachi sad like that when uh, at the beck and call of people who are pulling out crescent moons to islam pulling out jewish stars of david pulling out crosses of jesus pulling out anything at all that is a religion pulling out a tambo we, 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 sangom. when we are allowing ourselves to be swayed to and from by such people as these or when we allow them to scare us out of our boots 
and our pantyhose. We are not Christian on that day. Boldness is a requirement in the kingdom of heaven. Cowardice, cowardice is not inherit. It does not inherit the kingdom of heaven. It is written in uh, Revelation, I believe, 22. That outside are the dogs, those who are cowardly, those who are sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, etc. As in those who are outside of the kingdom of heaven and so therefore cast into the eternal lake of fire, they are dogs, they are cowards. So if you are a coward, if you cower, if you down tools on what you said yesterday, even though it is biblically correct, you are outside of the kingdom of heaven. And the tribulation is to set that kind of record straight. The Lord is gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast life. He doesn't want people perishing. He doesn't want pastors, especially pastors, that he has called to find themselves in the eternal lake of fire. Many are called, but few are chosen. He does not want them going to hell because they are going to be beaten with many blows given that they were pastors. And so he will give them the rapture. He will show people like Abba Matol and Abba Mosa Sono. They started out all right and now they like went awry in Jefela, took some funny little direction distance. The man, like there's so much of a hunger for God that his church buxoms versions until he becomes a millionaire and now that he's a millionaire he's starting to preach health wealth and prosperity but back in the day when he was still struggling he was preaching the truth that's a man that has tarried from the truth he is far away from grace he has embraced the word of faith movement he has embraced health wealth and prosperity when he gave so many people goes away to hope i mean the lord does not want people like that just going to hell many are called but few are chosen so he will give them the tribulation the lord knows who are his and he knows how to bring the righteous to himself the lord uh, what is this judgment begins with the church of the lord jesus christ he will rebuke them with the tribulation after the rapture has happened I once had a dream of Mike Todd. I'm talking about Mike Todd. All the way elevation church. I blow me lenja fella as a parishioner. I'm a meter illiscap sale. I'll humble because the rapture happened. He humbled himself to the position of a parishioner, of a person sitting in the church pews, of a congregant instead of a pastor because he realized he had no business preaching seeing as he did not know how to rightly divide the word of truth i literally had a dream about maybe like last year Angazi, some time ago of mike todd the pastor a lead pastor of elevation church i had a dream of him humbling himself to the status of a parishioner because uboni where he can't be pastor he was sitting down to be taught because he realized what does a prophet mean to gain the whole world and yet lose my soul i'm not gonna deny it to these people that i deceived them i didn't understand the word of god i don't want to go to hell so after the rapture happened he humbled himself to the status of a parishioner that's what i saw and that day is coming when some of the pastors of some of the biggest like mega churches on the earth are going to sit down next to you toasting and cheersing talking about their relationship with jesus but god fella everybody in the fella is having a hard time and the people who have been put in a position to lead underground saints are going to have been regular james and joes that were working nine to five jobs that weren't really trying to preach or anything like that in the tribulation it's going to be people that were either like maybe belonging to other religions like muslims or whatever james and joes like that's just the good old-fashioned next door neighbor guy that likes walking his dogs it's going to be the gay guy that was disinterested in jesus because he did not like his lifestyle when the rapture has happened those are going to be preachers those are going to be the ones that are leading the underground church of the tribulation because they never put themselves in a position to teach they never put themselves in a position to teach christians but former teachers former what do you call this uh, pastors preachers yeah those who put themselves in positions of leadership those people that were running bible style study groups might be in positions of honor indeed just as the scriptures write prophecy will be fulfilled those who exalted themselves will be humbled they will be humbled they will be put at the lower most part of the whole congregation they will listen this time around instead of talk and that's how they will enter the kingdom of heaven they will discover that they have no no business being a pastor because of what under heaven it is that they did in this uh, what is this uh in deceiving everybody into embracing a gospel that does not save anathema essentially let them be anathema so now i mean all of these uh prophetic dreams that i am getting living in a country that is essentially squeezing me out as to a toothpaste tube gets not anywhere to go i'm at the lowest part of africa so really you're taking me into the ocean now aren't you you're squeal into the ocean saying garabo there's no place for you on the lands across africa across the world at large there's no way for you so if you want me to drown in the ocean before that will happen the lord will rapture the body of christ look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh my mother got given a prophetic dream years ago where it is that she was shown this time where the world would be coming to an end and she would hate my she would despise and hate my testimony she would resent my rightness 
because she will have insisted Uguti Huye, all right, lie in Katwin. And yet it will have been proven that I'm right. My family has been turned into filth and this country has gone dark. My professing family are going to be beaten with many blows absent of them repenting. And right now, they cannot stomach what it is that I have to say. There are loggerheads with me. They're antagonistic. They are brutally rebuffy of me. All they can say is, you don't know what you're talking about. Like literally the other day, my sister yelled at me when I was highlighting that I'm a Christian, telling me that I came Zalone because I gave Gereke. Gereke of which allow me to just uh, kind of highlight and put in your general grill that Gifiti le drove by Yon Grace Bible Church at Ding. Gabloma Kodeng was hanging out in the children's church as a children's church Sunday school teacher. And I ended up leaving because of the fact that the doctrine was so fallen. And I left them for a, what do you call this, a Baptist church? I moved to a Baptist church. And that same Baptist church that preached what I imagined to be very well, expository preaching. They were the ones that persecuted me the most. So the church that was the most biblically sound in terms of doctrine, rightly, right division of God's word expository preaching like i said systematic theology the church that was reformed because i'm a reformed um christian i'm a calvinist just without the eschatological views of john calvin and co that's who i am so i joined a reformed church in this country a baptist joint where i could easily sit in the pews without feeling grieved by what was preached so it was a step up from grace i was not worried about being lambasted with heresy from the pulpit and that church that was that voracious that sound was the one that persecuted me the most the most at at, at, at Rima, they just ignored me when i was trying to be really godly and fellowship with them they just ignored me i would make calls trying to meet with women's groups and whatnot and i would not have anybody coming back to me on email and stuff because they were like you're taking things too seriously with this christian thing Rima ignored me okay grace grieved me in terms of doctrine and then emmanuel baptist Rama ignored me grace grieved me and emmanuel baptist excommunicated me so i've been to two mega churches and one small one and the last one was basically a charles spurgeon walking around just not the saved version and when then you are living in a country where churches kick you out thinking that they're doing a service to God. You are going to get secular randos, pagans in these streets, mocking you for not attending church. And so when you get squeezed out of a country and all you can do is live in the ocean, the Lord is going to vacuum you out of the earth because it has seen it fit to vomit you out. The milk that you consume. As milk. And you come out all sour, like I'm sour right now. There is no place for you in the body, is there? There is no place for you in this earth. There's no place. If a democratic country that calls itself Christian, there is nowhere for you to hang. And my mother could not fathom the day when she would not be able to stand anything that comes out of my mouth, especially when I speak about religion. My older sister could not fathom the day when she would persecute me so badly, treat me like this, have no regard for my human rights and what I believe and what I want to stand with. When I was newly saved, the guy that my sister was dating at the time was like, no, leave her alone. She's found something that works for her, leave her. And she was convinced by her lover. And now today, who are, you know, upon initially leaving me alone to be as religious and not as I want to be, now today she's persecuting me for being Christian. If anything, she's telling me I'm not Christian because I don't belong to a church. When, like I said, <laughs> Rayma ignored me, Grace grieved me, and then Emmanuel Baptist excommunicated me. Where are you going to go after that? I then lost everything. My job, Alice, I could not then find a new, uh, what is not country, uh, church in this land. But I have tried to fellowship with Christians in this country on the internet and there's a chick that i met in south africa a couple of months ago and after knowing me for just two or three weeks she decided to go and i thought i had a sister in christ that's the south african church for you you scatter the sheep shepherds scatter the sheep my shepherds scattered me and now pagans mock me unbelievers tease me for not being a christian so i mean if at all god is feeling very severely mocked by that activity what then he will do is set the record straight and make it clear that the very garabo that you claimed was not my disciple because she was not going to church every sunday she's the only one that left and yet go and look at all of those people that were busy attending church every single sunday they're out here hanging out with you in these streets rolling around like a soccer ball down a steep mountain the way by they're all freaking out what in the world how could god go and grab literally just five people out of five thousand how in the world under heaven are we all 
Oh, I guess, yeah, no, the Bible does say the great apostasy would happen. People would not endorse sound doctrine and so having itching ears, they would gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what those itching ears want to hear. They will despise the truth, take pleasure in their unrighteousness. They will not be able, they will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of a demons. It's the great apostasy. They will fall away. So that's why God, out of a radius of 5,000 people, took only five, even though it was a church belt. Even though it was a church country, church province, even though it was a church land, church city, church town. And yet when you look at those women in the corner over there, they ostracized the only one that was truly consecrated. When you look at them, they're busy gossiping the very one that was truly consecrated. The way Kisebi Luen Kate and in the body of Christ, I was like, Anjani. When I was newly saved, all I could wonder and think was, I thought all I'm experiencing the same trashy, crappy girl beef as a Christian and among Christians. When there's no difference, when no way, whatever, mesugo, sorry. When there is no difference between your experiences with other women, women, you know how it is, especially in the black community, there's so much attitude. It's passing shade in Jafela all over the show. But just so much shade passing in the black community. I don't even know how black women make friends with each other. The way and when you experience that issue all throughout your life and it just aggrieves you and it's like oh goodness can't i just make one solid friend in like a 10 year radius come on just one i don't want more than that i'm not gonna be greedy i'm not gonna be patient and expect to have five really great friends or maybe 50 just give me one when you are punched for friends who stay faithful and loyal to you friends who are not gonna pass you shade today even though yeah when that is your experience you would know what i'm talking about black girls and then you go to church and what it's what man come on like come on it's the same thing that was my cognitive dissonance that's what i experienced me now when i got born again i thought would you relieve finally you don't get the attitude among black girls now yo hi at least me and i went into churches and chicks were still passing me shade on sundays you know the way the way we don't even look at each other in the eye when we pass each other as black girls because we're always just spawning and beefing and competing and trying to basically cause another woman to stare you down look at you and all the shoes and the beautiful jewelry or jewelry you're wearing while she neglects looking at you to make it clear that rather oiling that's how black girls walk around each other where you go you be queuing like proper go queuing and i am wearing a snake like you and there will be a black girl behind you and in front of you and you will not have a conversation because girl fell under fella you are even sniffing each other's perfume to see who is wearing a scent you can recognize and if you are and whatnot. You then look away again. That's black girls for you. Chilling in a snake like you, that's gonna last for like a good 15 minutes. Because you need to use the bathroom. And you will not talk to somebody in Jafala just to pass that time. Because you know you can relate with them. They look like Yuki Osuahaho. It's a sister. She's made of your skin color. There's something, you know, acknowledge and I know. So much shade passing. I missed black girls. And when you are chilling at a queue, dibuka. When you're chilling in a queue, never mind kerekeng, but a Christian bookstore like Kum Books, behind a black girl. And the queue is also either snake-like or what is this? The 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 person that is the cashier, Oslo. So things are taking a minute. You can't even have a conversation with them, but you're at Kum Books. You're at Kum Books. This is a Christian bookstore, meaning you're a Christian. So, hi in the name of Christ would be nice. How are you doing? What are you reading over there? Do you have any literature to recommend to me? Yeah, no, because I'm trying to find something that's going to build up my spirit. I'm struggling with prayer. So, is there anything that I see? I mean, do you, do you, do you read a lot? Like, or are you just kind of experimenting right now with literature? Yeah, you can't even have a conversation like that. So, blow me the either go queue, yako Kum Books, or yako Rema Bookstore. And Hoto, the guru 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 crickets all over the show. Chicks still passing you shade and attitude. Es on dueni. I mean, there ought to be a difference of treatment in that regard. Or liduti next to each other and before the church service in Kala. Hoto, it's a fail. Eh? So you just like all awkward. Yeah. yeah you, your head is bobbling around. Nkaro, you're a bubble head mokoloing. High drive and so it's a so so so. That's all you're doing. Swaying in your chair. Be like uh, forward and back, forward and back, and then as soon as the music starts, why am I? Matsoha go dimu. My God is able. Wait, sitting here, omomoying. Oto ake lidi kele di. But your sister next to you, you cannot love. Why is the love of God flowing in you, not causing you to just want to hug your sister? Why, what is it that it like, batong, you know, fellowship with people is so precious and yet the way people take it for granted, Shem, the sad thing is that you're going to miss it in the tribulation because there's going to be so much loneliness. 
the bustling nature of countries and cities you're gonna miss it you're gonna you know when a person's all up in your personal space how does the oh goodness no whoa like helotosis match come on like keep a distance give me five meters but when it's a ghost town you're gonna want that person to be all up in your neck your your side to a point of fighting you down the way lily links like tight like sewing stitching suturing them to you when you're in a ghost town and the tribulation is going to give all that perspective to you you are going to realize how pompous you are how were how arrogant you were when i started going to church when i was going to Ima, the way the like chicks in the office got thing like it was just, i couldn't understand what was going on like I, 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 one of them is a celebrity was a celebrity and it is a celebrity still in this country when i saw her at church I stared at her, she's a very beautiful woman and she was walking around like a peacock with her noise, nose in the sky like she's a celebrity and she was walking amidst Christians at a church like Beyonce like walking in public expecting expecting to to be respected and revered among brethren she was expecting all of us women to be like yo that's a that's Bandani that's Bandani or says on any girl like that's the one place where you're not an actress that's the one place where you're not a model that's the one place where you are not some prolific tv presenter or a news anchor you are just a sh you are just sister brenda you are just a sister piggy i can see because at this point you're acting like a pig <laughs> that's what's good oh peggy as on when was peggy girl you are not the news anchor you are not the person that is so beautiful that like you know you're in the entertainment industry you have gotten to where you got because you look very beautiful and when you're a beautiful woman and you are used to everybody staring at you you tum you sometimes just walk around uh, just enjoying and basking in the sun of everybody's attention when you're not paying attention to them but when you come to christ that's the kind of stuff that gets humbled when you come to christ that's the kind of stuff that chills yeah blow manje like a beast that's frankly unacceptable you gotta put it on some hard knock tranquilizers and realize that among brethren you are not the gorgeous girl in the school you are a sister in christ and you are not only going to need people in the future but they're going to need you and you're going to have to be humble and not be wondering what does she think about my skin what does she think about my hair what does she think about my shoes what does she think about the fact that i've acted in four sitcom series in the country what does she think about the fact that i'm famous and i'm about to marry the most famous guy in the country you must think about them as brothers and sisters you gotta put all of your clout and your vain glory at the door if anything you gotta work out your own salvation with fear and trembling seek the lord's face to enable you to overcome that vain glory when you know you got it going on the lord as soon as you come to him convicts you of things that you struggle with and so you have to realize that you cannot walk like a miss, miss south africa on a modeling ramp you cannot do that that is not christianity that is not how we ought to be the early church should teach some people a couple of lessons and so now today when i look at that same chick in the media i cannot rest easy with her claiming herself a christian because it's like but when i saw you in church once you couldn't even look me more my tongue as a sister it was bustling you were walking around like a peacock on a modeling ramp expecting everybody to hold out the way that you get out when you walk on a set to go and record a movie you're not that girl at church so i don't see you as a sister i just see you as the girl that ignored me because she was too famous and too popular and too glorious in the room to even look at me no but like christ goodness like jesus we ought emulate the lord that's what it is that his word says the lord was essentially a, a whole celebrity in his town and yet he was able to humble himself to the level of prostitutes and tax collectors and sit with them he was able when that one woman touched his garment and power left him he stopped the show and said who touched me for power has left me and when that woman then came forward and said it was me lord it was me scared that the celebrity is going to be like don't touch me i am king instead he was like woman your faith has healed you that's what he said your faith has healed you that's how he regarded her that that's what it is that god does so when you're big and you become a christian when people touch you you must react like jesus who touched me hey what's your name i'm brenda it's nice to meet you so uh where do you stay how long have you been in the church do you know this area very well not me i'm new do you perhaps want to um you know sit in the same place that's how it is that when people are low-key starstruck around you in the church when when they act when they look at you because they recognize you you don't have the liberty or the luxury 
to be a star and feel like oh i'm too inundated i cannot focus you can't walk around like a prima donna in the middle of church folk and that's the kind of stuff that people are going to have themselves realize they're gonna wake up and see that when they've been left behind i worked so hard for the lord i gave so many speeches about jesus at funerals i was the person always talking about the state of this dead person and how the lord has embraced them etc i was I looked at as a pillar of, of um of advice of hope people looked up to me especially in the name of jesus and i'm still here they will wear humility gangani guys they will wear humility gangani everybody has their flaws and their vices beautiful women have that as a vice i would know beautiful women have that as a vice where you literally expect everybody to look at you and when you come to christ you gotta work on that work on that work on looking at other people in the eye work work on instead of walking straight gotta you're a model on a ramp past people work on looking left and looking right and seeing who's looking at you so you can hit them with a side schmuck as you pass them to acknowledge that they're there greet people go out of your way whatever attitudes you might have had historically you need to overcome them i used to struggle with the attitude of black men how it is that they will pass you shade out, Zip? like act as if you're not in the room i actively started make, going out of my way to greet them hello 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 until it got to a point where they warmed up like you know when a person almost stumbles because they did not expect you to greet because they were busy walking around and then when you're like hello they're like oh hi hi like gliding not even walking and so ultimately after a couple of like tries in greeting them like that they then calmed down humbled themselves whenever i was approaching them and from a distance they would be like hi garavo with a smile instead of spawning and this like this attitude on some of the the the, the, the arch villain yeah villain superman and there's no telling what's gonna happen it's gonna break out into some kind of whoa black men can pass black chicks shade too especially if they find them attractive and black women pass shade to each other in period whether or not they feel like competition is in the room it's an issue and when i started when i started out grima I was so disappointed by how it is that the same attitude that I am met with go officing monkey sebe tsang teng go vets monkey attendant thing everywhere where I go to fella as a black woman I'm getting the same vibes go molong in the queues same vibes angbugwa angbuliswa kodwa ningumzalwane esontweni so therefore sonke were the same thing we ought be anyway it was the same thing and when your experiences at church are similar to your experiences I miss secular folk also you're not you're not in church yo you're not in church also our course on pain the only place where that changed was indeed the baptist congregation in ninyani that i attended there people acknowledged each other there people greeted each other there people were cordial and kind to each other there there was a sense of camaraderie among saints that i felt in a way that just did not exist in these mega churches at grace it was not there even when i was part of the children's church there was beef among women in the children's church sunday school teachers were competitive with each other in ingbor like it was so irritating it was so incredibly irritating and taxing only when i got to the other church Marakotengi, there was a whole cult operating a coven that squeezed me out because i was a you know ish, i was a praying christian and when there's a whole coven operating they, they squeeze out but hey man what happened at my last church was ridiculous it was ridiculous it was unexpected it was a rabbit pulled out of a hat i i never saw it coming it was a whammy on the side of the head just the they came at me from the back it was the worst it was the worst i, I could anticipate like i would have much faster expected persecution at that height from grace and from rhema than what i got at that little baptist church and yeah i got it real bad like they kicked me from the back bang rachile with a boot print on my back and i did i did not see it coming i didn't i didn't so i mean these things are going to be raised by the lord these things are also going to convict you they're gonna show you that i was just instead of being just a diva i was now a christian diva so i mean i guess i was never really saved you will know them by their fruit you not merely make a profession of jesus of faith god is not mocked do not be deceived whatsoever a man soweth so too shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you will reap corruption so the corruption of the celeb that i saw at rhema was indeed in her pomp as she walked right by me i looked at her instead only because i recognized her as a celebrity but being a celebrity she ought realize the propensity towards that discover that she's in church realize also that she must humble herself and miss brethren because here you're not a celebrity or a saint and here you are equal with all and so your clout in the world out there ought not have bearing on how you get treated in this joint that's not how god works 
That's not how God works. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will, ex will be exalted. So there's going to be a lot of sorrow at the, after the rapture, a lot of it. People who will have expected to go home. Same celebrity of which, in and of herself and Le Husband Yat professing Christians and yet there are things that they do that are very compromising in the media. Um, out there that evidence that, you know, like no fruit, no fruit at all, no fruit. Like, how can I do, like, I don't, like, don't want to expand on all of these things, man. Um, 